It's one of the most hotly contested races, the presidential election. Do you plan to get out and vote? I'm Quinn Crosby, and coming up on WVU News, I sat down with West Virginia Secretary of State to tell you why you need to cast your ballot. We often underestimate the power of social media. I'm Morgan Malerski, and straight ahead on WVU News, I'll tell you how social media is bringing awareness to the West Virginia flood victims. The heroin epidemic affecting our state has made its way to Morgantown. I'm Kristen Tool, and coming up, I'll tell you how a local hotel is catering to West Virginia's drug problem. Our Emmy award-winning WVU News starts now. Election day is getting closer and Democratic nominee Hillary Clinton's lead is beginning to shrink, along with the number of people at the polls. I'm Hannah Getz. And I'm Kristen Toll. West Virginia Governor Earl Ray Tomlin is seeking millions more from Congress to further flood relief efforts. These stories and more on WVU News, an Emmy award-winning newscast produced by television journalism students right here at West Virginia University. Last week, photos from our neighboring state of Ohio were released, showing two adults passed out in a car with a child in the back seat. That's right, Hannah, and the cause of this scary image, an alleged heroin overdose. The drug is affecting many parts of the nation, with nearly 600,000 people nationwide addicted to heroin. But I learned more about how it's been especially damaging here in West Virginia. Ripped from the headlines. Heroin is an epidemic that has hit West Virginia hard. Star City Police Officer Ryan White says the Morgantown area is not immune to this addictive drug. We have a very serious problem here. It's killing, it's killing our families, it's killing everybody, it's killing our children, it's killing our elderly, it's killing our moms and dads. A hotel in Star City is catering to this heroin epidemic by accepting cash payments and not requiring photo IDs. Police say in the last 18 months, there have been 25 cases of drug overdoses at this location that led to arrests. CNN recently reported that in only four hours, there were 27 overdoses, including one death in Huntington, West Virginia. Officials believe the drug may be laced with fentanyl, making it particularly dangerous. And police right here in Morgantown say that type of drug has made its way here. With this laced drug on the market, heroin users in Morgantown are realizing how dangerous this habit can be. And they're warning people that the side effects are not worth the high. This is no fun anymore. Like my physical health is, is shot, but uh, my mental health is what's what I would really like to have back now most. Uh, and that's what ultimately that's what heroin does. <clears throat> it just it takes everything from you. West Virginia is leading the nation in drug overdose deaths. And following recent events, officials say enough is enough. And the kids are the saddest stuff. They just in total neglect. Go there to a room and. There'll be two kids walking around, diapers, parents passed out in the bed, no bed for the kids to sleep in, no food. Currently, Star City officials say there's an ongoing heroin case that could lead to several arrests. In President Obama's administrative action announced last spring, he includes expanding access to West Virginia community health centers for heroin addicts. I understand, Kristen, that this action totals $1.7 million in funding. Well, Hannah, health care spending is one of many hot-button issues for this year's presidential election. That's right, Kristen. Reporter Quinn Crosby is here to tell us more about the race in the Mountain State. Quinn? Thanks, Hannah and Kristen. In the 2012 presidential election, West Virginia had the lowest turnout rate of any state in the country. Now, West Virginia Secretary of State Natalie Tennant is sending out a clear message that everyone needs to get out and vote. I was able to sit down with Secretary Tennant to discuss why people in the Mountain State should be taking advantage of their right to vote. Is West Virginia moved from 45th to the 26th place in voter turnout in the United States after this year's primary? The bad news? Recent polls say only 54% of Americans actually go out and vote. Secretary of State Natalie Tennant says that is simply not acceptable. You don't want a minority of the people deciding for the majority of the state. And, you know, sometimes people even say to me, I don't vote. And, and they think they, they take that as pride. Well, you know, that's not rebellion, that's surrender. What's the number one reason Americans don't go out and vote? Because they believe 
of their vote simply won't matter. But that's not true. Here's a fact. Back in 1845, just one vote made Texas an official state and part of this country. And while Americans over the age of 45 have the highest voter turnout, college students are the least likely to hit the polls. That's why Secretary Tenet recently made a stop to tell students why it is so important. We have implemented online voter registration. So over the last uh, 11 and a half months, it has been very successful. Um, we've had uh, more than 45,000 people interact with our online voter registration system. This upcoming election, I think, is really important. Um, you know, there's a lot of like you know big issues coming in. Uh, we got two candidates that are like you know polar opposites, and you know that's why everyone needs to vote. In the last presidential race, approximately 58 percent of Americans voted, but Secretary Tenet is hoping that here in West Virginia, those numbers will be much higher. The United States presidential election is Tuesday, November 8th. You can register to vote and find out more about the upcoming election by visiting Secretary Tenet's website at the bottom of your screen. Hannah and Kristen, back to you. Thanks, Quinn. As the political race continues, Milan Pharmaceuticals here in Morgantown has been getting the heat from Congress. Milan's EpiPen is seeing a major price hike. Reporter Jacqueline Fenton is in the studio to tell us more about the latest outrage people are showing for the new price. Jacqueline? Thanks, Hannah and Kristen. Milan is receiving plenty of resistance over the 400% price increase of EpiPens. And CEO Heather Brush testified in front of Congress on Wednesday in response to the backlash. In recent weeks, people have been outraged and protesting over the price increase of EpiPens, from $100 for a two-pack to $600. Milan CEO Heather Brush says her company will release a generic EpiPen within the next few weeks, and it will be listed at $300 per two-pack. The original wholesale price of EpiPens before the price hike started was around $50. Bucks. WVU News reached out to CEO Heather Brush, but she did not return our calls or emails. Kristen and Hannah, back to you. Thanks, Jacqueline. Student health and safety is important to WVU as well. That's why Fall Fest this year was relocated from downtown to the Evansdale campus. After inspection of the Mountain Lair Plaza, engineers recommended that no large events should take place there due to visible structural concerns. The Green held 83 events just last year, one of those events being Fall Fest, where 20,000 students piled behind the lair for a free concert. WVU officials say that renovations will be made next year, but the concert may still not return to the downtown area. While the green is not structurally safe for large events, WVU officials say it's safe for everyday usage and smaller events. What does it take to rebuild after a flood? When historic flash floods devastated parts of southern West Virginia in June, residents turned to social media for help. That's right, Kristen. Hashtag West Virginia Strong has been a trending tweet since the floods. Morgan Malarski joins us now from Social Square with the latest in social media and pop culture news. Morgan? Social media has changed how West Virginians respond to breaking news. Images of Mother Nature's fury were posted to Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, showing the devastation from the flooding. But social media has also been used to raise awareness. I took a deeper look into how social media has given flood victims hope again. The third deadliest flood on record hit southern West Virginia that resulted in 23 deaths in over 1,200 destroyed homes. 8 to 10 inches of rain fell over a period of 12 hours, resulting in Governor Earl Ray Tomlin to declare a state of emergency. From behind me, you can see the Mon River in Morgantown, which is about nine feet high. From just one day of flooding, the Elk River reached to about 27 feet, which is three times this height. Whether on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, social media has become the outlet to raise awareness and fundraising for the victims. The hashtag WVFloods is being used nationally. On Twitter, thousands of tweets were posted by users to get the word out. WVU student Brett Anderson says he found out about the natural disaster through social media. I actually did not watch anything through the news on it. I kept everything through Twitter and just news updates on my phone through the CNN app and 
and Fox News app. April Call, Director of News at West Virginia University Relations, explains the importance of social media during breaking news. A lot of people who maybe want to donate aren't near a television uh, and maybe aren't even near a radio. Social media can be the best platform to reach a large number of people very quickly and let them know how they can help because that's always the first question when a disaster happens. In addition to spreading the news, social media is also being used to collect donations for the flood relief. West Virginia native and country singer Brad Paisley began a GoFundMe page for flood victims that has raised over $700,000. The WVU Alumni Foundation is continuing to take donations as well at the GoFundMe website. You can visit the page and donate by going to the link on the screen. That's such a great story, Hannah. Thanks, Morgan. WVU was proud to have multiple Olympic medalists this summer. Sports reporter Ashley Rogers tells us all about the WVU student that won the first gold medal for the USA in Rio. I'm Ashley Rogers, and coming up on WVU News, I'll introduce you to an athlete who has achieved so much in just her freshman year. Ready to go? Sometimes the most important lessons are learned outside the classroom. Are we going the right way? When you chase the unknown, take a risk, and push beyond your boundaries. That's when you discover who you really are. Every journey starts with a first. Let's go. It's not every day that an athlete can say they're an Olympic gold medalist, Kristen. That's right, Hannah. Sports reporter Ashley Rogers is here to tell us about a 19-year-old Mountaineer who brought home the gold. Ashley? Thanks, Hannah and Kristen. Many Olympians train all their lives for a moment on the biggest stage of sports, but the first time Jenny Thrasher picked up a rifle was in 2012. Four years later, she's an Olympic gold medalist and the third youngest USA women shooting medalist. I found out what life is like for her after she got a shot she wouldn't miss. Jenny Thrasher capped off a successful freshman year when she won the first gold medal at the 2016 Olympics, making her the youngest woman to do so and the first woman to win gold at WVU. I think it's every athlete's dream to be able to go to the Olympics and to be able to represent their country on such a scale. But just three weeks before Olympic trials, Thrasher was busy leading her team to its fourth straight and 18th overall NCAA championship. However, this level of success is nothing new to WVU's rifle program. It's amazing for me to be part of it. Um, you know, it is such a great history and tradition. Um, you know, it's really a great honor for me to be able to coach the team and, and be part of the, the program and the history that the program has. Ranked as the NCAA's second top returning female athlete that competed in Rio, Thrasher says she won't let her accomplishments affect the way she prepares for the season. It could affect the way other people see me in rifle competition, but for me, it doesn't matter. All that matters is what I'm doing, how I'm shooting, and how the team's doing. After a busy summer, Thrasher was welcomed back with open arms and a packed Mountaineer field to celebrate her and fellow Mountaineer Olympians. Coming back to West Virginia and seeing what the reaction from the community has been, has been absolutely incredible. While she has exceeded her expectations of where Rifle would take her, she's appreciative of her success in such a short time. I didn't speculate much on what, what could be in the future, but I'm so happy that I did pick up the rifle, and I'm so happy that I put in the hard work to get me here, because this is where I belong. Just a sophomore, Thrasher will now lead her team as they prepare to not only defend their title, but go after their fifth consecutive NCAA championship. Thrasher also holds more than 20 USA shooting and National Rifle Association records. The rifle team will begin their title defense on October 2nd versus Ohio State and will start conference play October 15th at NC State. Thanks, Ashley. Well, that's going to do it for this week's edition of WVU News. You can visit us online on our website. You can also watch any of our shows on YouTube, and please follow us and our reporters on Twitter. I'm Kristen Toole. And I'm Hannah Getz. Thanks for watching WVU News. We'll see you next time.